And welcome back to American Agenda. The CDC says it will not be revising its guidelines to reopen schools, despite Vice President Mike Pence saying it would. The agency will instead provide additional reference documents to help communities with the process. Take a listen to what CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield had to say on GMA this morning. Our guidelines are our guidelines, but we are going to provide additional uh, reference documents. So I think it's really important. It's not a revision of the guidelines. It's just to be brought, provide additional information to help um, the schools be able to use the guidance that we put forward. And this comes after the president criticized the CDC's guidelines, saying they are too tough, expensive, and impractical. So what, if anything, should be changed with these? Natalie, what do you think? Well, I mean, can you believe how the media is like taking the CDC guidelines and acting like, see, this is why we can't open up school, you know, for the next year. I mean, can you even believe this is 2020? We're actually debating whether or not people should go back to school. I mean, shouldn't we be debating like school choice and things like that? But no, it's whether or not they should go back to school. And so the CDC, you know, they've been clear in the guidelines. Obviously, no school is like one size fits all. I mean, you got charter schools. They're only going to be back for a couple of days a week. You've got other public schools in different states that are doing very well. So it's going to be have to be customized, but we need to get kids back to school. I mean, they're more at risk from the seasonal flu in terms of developing complications from that than from coronavirus. So it is safe. Obviously, we can do different protocol to make it safer for the environment, for the teachers. But to simply look at the guidelines and say, oh, no, we can't do that. Or, oh, just send us billions of dollars and we'll refurbish our schools or keep sending us funding while we don't have schools. I mean, let's have a reasonable conversation about getting kids back to school because not everybody, especially Especially, I mean, look at kindergartners. You can't expect them to sit in front of a computer for the next year and expect them to be where they are in their grade. You know, the next generation. Do we want all of our kids missing, you know, a year of school? That, that, that'd be a scary future. Yeah, that's really scary. You know, not all families have laptops. I listened to a woman the other day when uh, when President Trump is having that roundtable. She's a business owner and she has three kids. And she said, I don't have three laptops, you know, for them to be doing this, this distance learning. Uh, so it kind of seems that some of the blue states are pushing against reopening. Do you agree? Well, I think that you certainly see, I think that there are different results ahead, based upon, sure, there are different results based upon what state that you're looking at. Um, and I agree with you that uh, the politics uh, certainly blends into this issue as it does a number of other issues. Um, but when you're talking about the situation regarding schools, this is really a growing storm cloud that's going to continue to get worse and more complicated as we get into the end of the summer. You see the administration basically putting on a full court press over the last couple of days, and especially during this week, telling local school districts that they may forfeit federal funding if they don't fully open. You also see uh, a new dispute that has arisen on the college and university level with the new lawsuit in federal court in Massachusetts by MIT and Harvard uh, regarding F-1 student visas, where the administration said if uh, students are going to be online, then their visas are going to be pulled. So this is a very complicated issue. The administration is saying we're not going to be able to get full recovery in the economy if uh, kids are going to be stuck at school, uh, away from school and learning online. The schools are saying we need some funding and it's a lot more complicated than people are making it out to be. I agree it needs to be a conversation, unfortunately. Uh, it doesn't yield itself to an easy answer. Yeah, Bob, it certainly is complicated. Everything from whether they're going to change the air, air circulation in the schools to um, busing. I mean, it almost seems like it's become political and not really what's in the best interest for our kids and, and parents. Yeah, I wish it hadn't become so political, to tell you the truth. I live in a red state in uh, Tennessee. My wife is a teacher. There are real risks associated with going back, but I think most people want to go back and realize there is some risk. But having said that, there's probably more unknown in this than just about anything. Um, but if we start looking at the tools that we have, we do have treatments. We do have ability to test. Um, we, we do have the ability to, to, to work on a vaccine down the road that hopefully there's something by the end of the year. Um, I think people do want to go forward. Does this become political, like between Cuomo? for instance, and the president, yeah. But I do think most parents especially, and that's red state, blue state, I think most parents do want to go back to school. It's just there's a lot of unknown, and we're trying to figure out what's going to work.
I know that in uh, Nashville, where I'm a writing coach for incoming graduate business students, Allie, they, they lost a lot of Chinese students that used to come in because our relationship with the Chinese has gone south. And I think there is a fear this may extend to others, but I guess as Natalie's saying is, uh, you don't need to be here if you're not taking part in actual schooling. Yeah, well, Natalie brought up a good point, because if you are only doing classes online and you have these foreign students, where are they going to dorm if the dorms are closed? And so do they, are they still paying their housing? Are they still paying all of those fees in addition to tuition? Where will they go? So that's a really good point. And again, a lot of colleges are still trying to figure it out. I, I think it was Harvard. We talked about it the other day where you still are paying your full tuition, but you're learning online. Yeah, Seth, what about that? I think it's 49000 something for tuition each year for Harvard. Well, I'll tell you what, if I was sending my kid to Harvard, I'd be pretty upset. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to spend the same money as if uh, he was uh, he or she was, uh, you know, in, in the basement learning online. And, you know, look, it's, it's, it's very frustrating. You want people to be safe. It, it, it is a very hard and it's a complex issue as it relates to the university and the college issue. In the Massachusetts case, um, the Department of Homeland Security already had a regulation in place saying that during the pendency of the national emergency, if you were going to be learning online, then it was okay and you were going to be in a, um, in a positive status. It was really only just the other day that the president actually changed that, which led to the lawsuit. So, listen, I would be frustrated, too. Um, based upon what's happening, and especially with these escalating costs. But I think that uh, we're seeing that as it relates to these federal regulations, it, it can be a pretty thorny issue. Uh, I'll give you the last word here, Natalie. Right. Well, it's like putting America's kids first, putting the same with American workers first. I mean, you've got all of this. We love, you know, legal immigration. We love bringing in people from other countries. But right now, we're, you know, it's like it's it's in a really tough spot. We're in a, it's not, you know, full blown recession, but we have to prioritize our jobs and our kids first, and then we can open up the country again. But let's put us first. All right, Natalie Harp and Seth Barenzweig, thank you very much for being with us today.